how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, yes, oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. My Jesus is wonderful, and he's mine and yours. And everybody that we're going to witness to that comes to Jesus. So I want to welcome you today. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God. This is May 9, May 9, and we have become to read 1 Samuel. How about that? My precious Sammy's name. And I'm going to get to say it every day. And for those of you who have not heard or do not know, on the 4th of May, uh, my Sammy went home to heaven. And he's up there walking with Jesus and the saints that are up there. Okay, and um, uh, he didn't suffer. Uh, you know, there was no trauma or blood or anything. God simply took him home, took him home, and uh, I'm doing very well. I have the peace that passes all understanding that was promised to us, and so I'm availing myself of the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm here today to worship, to shout praises along with you, and to read his precious word and let it feed us. For this day okay so Holy Ghost we'd ask that you would come in all of your power all of your glory all of the revelation that you can give us about this word today that we are going to get to read we give you all the glory and the praise for it in Jesus mighty mighty name all right we are in chapter 5 of first Samuel all right and it is quite a story. It is quite a story. There's this big fight We're between the Philistines. They're going to try to demolish Israel. And you know the Lord's hand is involved. His right hand of blessing is only letting them do a few things. So let's see what they are this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 5 verse 1. And then the Philistines took the ark of God and they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. And when the Philistines took the Ark of God, well, Jane wants to inject that they're in big trouble, okay? They took the Ark of God. They brought it into the house of Dagon. This image they worshipped. And set it by Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod arose early in the morning, there was Dagon, fallen on its face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and they set it back in its place again. And when they arose early the next morning, there was Dagon fallen on its face to the ground before the ark of the Lord, the head of Dagon, and both the palms of his hands were broken off. On the threshold, only Dagon's torso was left of it. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon nor any who come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day when this was written. But the hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashdod, and he ravaged them, and he struck them with tumors, both Ashdod and its territory. And when the men of Ashdod saw how it was, they said, the ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is harsh toward us, and Dagon our God 
Yeah, Dagon, your god, is broken up and useless. It was useless when they made it. And therefore they sent and they gathered to themselves all the lords of the Philistines. And they said, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, let the ark of the God of Israel be carried away to Gath. So they carried the ark of the God of Israel away. And so it was after they had carried it away that the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he struck the men of the city, both small and great, and tumors broke out on them. Hmm, what are we supposed to say about the tumors that are here today? Gives you some clues of how God is thinking, I think. You can receive that or not. That wasn't the word of God, that was Jane. Continuing with verse 10, Therefore they sent the ark of God to Ekron, and so it was as the ark of God came to Ekron. It's like we have a hot potato on our hands. That the Ekronites cried out saying, They have brought the ark of the God of Israel to us to kill us and our people. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it go back to its own place so that it does not kill us and our people. For there was a deadly pestilence throughout all the city and the hand of God was very heavy there. And the men who did not die <clears throat> were stricken with the tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. Chapter 6 of First Samuel. Now the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months, and the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners, saying, What shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it to its place. So they said, if you send away the ark of the God of Israel, do not send it empty, but by all means, return it to him with a trespass offering, and then you will be healed, and it will be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. And then they said, what is the trespass offering which we shall return to him? And they answered, five golden tumors and five golden rats. Rats. Okay, moving right along. According to the number of the lords of the Philistines, they want to get their own heads freed, don't they? For the same plague was on all of you and on your lords. Therefore, you shall make images of your tumors and images of your rats that ravish the land, and you shall give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will lighten his hand from you, from your gods, and from your land. Why then do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts when he did mighty things among them. Did they not let the people go that they might depart? Well, if these Philistines lords know all that, the sad truth is they turned down believing in the Lord from all the reports from Egypt didn't they? Now therefore, make a new cart. Take two milk cows, which have never been yoked, and hitch the cows to the cart, and take their calves home away from them. And then take the ark of the Lord, and set it on the cart, 
and put the articles of gold which you are returning to him as a trespass offering in a chest by itself and then send it away and let it go and watch if it goes up the road to its own territory to Beit Shemesh. Then he has done us this great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it is not his hand that struck us. It happened to us by chance. <laughs> There's no chance that it happened by chance. And then the men did so. They took two milk cows and they hitched them to the cart and they shut up their calves at home and they set the ark of the Lord on the cart. They can be grateful they, were, they weren't killed for touching the touching the ark, right? We have another occasion that's written in the Word of God where everybody that touched it, that was it. That was the end of them. They set the ark of the Lord on the cart and the chest with the gold wraths and the images of their tumors. Oh, what a pretty sight that was, huh? And then the cows headed straight for the road to Beit Shemesh and went along the highway, lowing as they went, cows mooing mournfully, and did not turn aside to the right hand or the left. Those mamas, it was a miracle hand of God because they didn't, their babies had been taken from them. And the lords of the Philistines went after them to the border of Beit Shemesh. Now the people of Beit Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley and they lifted their eyes and they saw the ark and they rejoiced to see it. And then the cart came into the field of Joshua of Beit Shemesh and stood there. A large stone was there. So they split the wood of the cart and they offered the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. The Levites took down the ark of the Lord and the chest that was with it in which were the articles of gold and put them on the large stone. And then the men of Beit Shemesh offered burnt offerings and made sacrifices the same day to the Lord. <clears throat> and when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, they returned to Ekron the same day. These are the golden tumors which the Philistines returned as a trespass offering to the Lord. One for Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon, one for Gat, one for Ekron. And the golden rats, according to the number of all the cities of the Philistines belonging to the five lords, both fortified cities and country villages, even as far as the large stone of Abel on which they set the ark of the Lord, which stone remains to this day in the field of Joshua of Beit Shemesh. And then he struck the, man of, the men of Beit Shemesh because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. He struck 50,070 men of the people. And the people lamented because the Lord had struck the people with a great slaughter. And the men of Beit Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before this holy God, this Lord God? And to whom shall it go up from us? So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kiriot Yaraim, saying, the Philistines have brought back the Ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up with you. And we move along to chapter 7 of 1 Samuel. And then the men 
of Kiriot Yarim came and took the ark of the Lord and they brought it into the house of Aminadab on the hill and they consecrated Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. So it was that the ark remained in Kiriot Yarim a long time. It was there 20 years. And all the house of Israel lamented before the Lord. And then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel saying, if you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods <clears throat> and the asterisks from among you and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the Baals and the Ashtoreths, and they served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah. They drew water, and they poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day. And they said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. Now when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. Still going to do that. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel said to Shemuel, Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb, and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. And then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel. And the Lord answered him. Now as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and drove them back as far as below Beit Kar. And then Samuel took a stone and he set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come any more into the territory of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And then the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel, were restored to Israel from Ekron to Gat. And Israel recovered its territory from the hands of the Philistines. Also, there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He went from year to to year on a circuit to Bethel, Gilgal, and Mizpah, and judged Israel in all those places. But he always returned to Ramah, for his home was there. And there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar to the Lord. Wow. Did you take all that in? I pray that you did. <laughs> Connie says hemorrhoids. 
We move right along to the New Testament, and we are in the incredible book of John, and we will read chapter 6. Chapter 6. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and then a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. And then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? And we are causing the spirit of expectancy to rouse up. And then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. <laughs> We're talking. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. As much as you want. It just kept multiplying. So when the, they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragrance, fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. And therefore they gathered them up and they filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. And then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. And therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now, when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was already dark. And Jesus had not come to them. And then the sea arose because of a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat. And they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. And then they willingly received him into the boat. <clears throat> and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. Did you catch that? Immediately the boat was where they were going. That's called translated. It was out in the Sea of Galilee, and it was rough. Wham! Whoosh. There they were. I'm going to say by the dock. They had arrived. Let's just say that. They arrived. Okay? Immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. 
Oh, hallelujah. There is nothing like you, Lord Jesus. Your miracles, they're just awesome that are documented here in your word. And Lord, you have not quit. You are doing miracles every day. Every day. Miracles of provision. Food that wasn't there before. Money that wasn't there before. A roof over a head that wasn't there before. You are healing. People who are going to die. Healed. Made totally whole and alive. You are bringing deliverance yet today to those possessed by evil spirits. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are timeless. You are forever. You always were. You are and you always will be. Praise Jesus. That's the God whom you and I worship. Glory be to his holy name. All right, we move right along to Psalm 106. Psalm 106. If you'd like to turn in your Bible and join us. And I hope you have this version. We're reading a very simple version. The New King James. All of these and the thous are gone, changed. The New King James. And it, it's, you know, so much harder if you've got, you're trying to look at a, another translation. Or maybe you're just listening. And that's fine. That's fine. But I hope maybe you can even, uh, <coughs> on these websites, you can probably get a used one for very, very little money. Check it out. Psalm 106. They, Israel, oh, here we go, soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but they lusted exceedingly in the wilderness, and they tested God in the desert, and he gave them their request, but he sent leanness into their soul. Leanness. And when they envied Moshe, Moses in the camp, and Aaron, the saint of the Lord, the earth opened up and swallowed Zatan and covered the faction of Abraham. A fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molded image. And thus they changed their glory into the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous things in the land of Ham, awesome things by the Red Sea. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. And then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his word, but complained in their tents. And did not heed the voice of the Lord. Therefore he raised his hand in an oath against them. To overthrow them in the wilderness. To overthrow their descendants among the nations. And to scatter them into the lands. They joined themselves also to Baal of Peor. And they ate sacrifices made to the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their deeds. And the plague broke out among them. And then Phinehas stood up and intervened. And the plague 
was stopped. And that was accounted to him for righteousness to all generations forevermore. Wow. What an account of the history that happened. And we need to take example and not cause the Lord to be angry by sinning. He can wipe you out. We move right along to Proverbs, and we will wrap up today's reading with Proverbs chapter 14, verses 32 and 33. Proverbs 14, 32 and 33. The wicked is banished in his wickedness, but the righteous has a refuge in his death. Oh, that's comforting to me, for my Sam. The righteous has a refuge in his death. Wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding. But what is in the heart of fools is made known. It's made known. They don't think it's they don't think they're going to be found out for the foolish and selfish, prideful things they do. How they steal, how they cheat, how they lie. But the Word of God says, but what is in the heart of fools is made known. Sooner or later, everybody knows. And then they lose it all. Praise God. What a word for us today. In every way, a lot from the Old Covenant, a lot from the New Covenant, a lot from the Psalm and the Proverb. And I pray in Jesus' name that you were blessed, that something jumped out at you to encourage or maybe answer something. Oh, hallelujah. So, y'all, let's pray. That powerful weapon of choice. We choose prayer and it moves God's hand. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I worship you today. Oh, yes, I give you praise. I lift you up high. Precious Jesus, slain before the foundation of the world. What a statement. Precious Lord, we hold up Jerusalem and we pray for her peace today. We pray for peace, Lord. Let your righteous right hand rest upon your people and the city of Jerusalem and the country of Israel. Please, Lord, particularly by the borders, where the enemy is throwing all kinds of things across, hoping to kill somebody, hoping to maim them. Evil, evil hearts, evil people doing evil things. Precious Lord, I'd ask you to put a barrier between them and what they're trying to do and the Israelis who live right by the border and who stay at the risk of their lives so that they don't run off and the enemy takes over that land, which is what they want to do. So, Father God, the little children, help them, Lord, as they go to school today, not to be afraid. Sometimes they hear an air raid siren, and they have to run into a shelter and stay there until it's clear. Father God, please, please, let it be a peaceful day in Jerusalem and all across the land. Let there be peace in the hearts of your people and not fear and trembling. Father God, we hold up the Knesset. I hold up Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu 
And I'd ask, Lord, that you'd keep this awesome anointing that you have upon his life, upon his mind, to serve his people and the country in this capacity of prime minister. Father God, please protect him everywhere he goes. <clears throat> Lord, help him protect his family and let Israel move ahead today with everything that you have for them. Lord, I turn my attention to America. And Lord, we're asking that you throw evil out more and more out of important places, out of our land. We ask for the blood of Jesus to flow all over America, that evil must leave because of the blood. Lord, let your blood be on us. Let us, Lord, have a spirit to repent daily, daily, before we put our head on the pillow so that we might wake up and greet a new day with a clean and clear heart. Precious Lord, we have many people to lift up to you, friends and relatives. Father, for all who are ill, all who are in trouble or in peril, all who have nothing to buy groceries with or pay their bills, Whatever situation, precious Lord, we'd ask that your Holy Spirit would come in and bring provision, bring help, touch them with healing, with deliverance. Each one, Lord, has people they are lifting up. And I give you praise and honor and glory all in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ. And Lord, I want you to know we're looking up and we're looking for you to burst through the sky and the clouds and arrive for your second time in all your glory. Not a baby this time but all your glory and you will come to rule and reign in Jerusalem, the whole earth, the whole earth. We are looking forward, Lord, to what the Father God is doing and we're going to make it. We are not going to allow Satan to take us down in any way, shape, or form, we repent of our sins, Lord, right now. We'd ask for your forgiveness. We'd ask that your blood would cover, cover. In Jesus' mighty name and to his glory and all of God's people, cry a hearty amen and went about your day in a beautiful way. I bless you today with all that you do, all that you say, all that you go, mm, don't say that. Mm, don't go there. Whoop, slow up, turn left. No, don't turn left. Turn right, whatever. Let Holy Spirit guide you. He desires to. He's your helper. The Word of God calls him your helper. And that's what he wants to do. So let him. Have a great day in the Lord. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.